whatever that soup may be. Okay, and, and, and we can all relate with this because we have sought in our kitchens, in our, on our dining tables, in restaurants, wherever you go, that you always have a salt container, a salt shaker. And uh, the true power of salt is not while it stays in the shaker. You've got to pour it into that soup. So we see that number one, the, suit, the, the salt must be poured out. And therefore, the people in your congregation, the people in your church, learn to release them. Have a marketplace mentality. Have a kingdom mentality, not a church mentality. When you have a church mentality, you become egocentric. When you have a church mentality, you have a confinement mentality. When you have a church mentality, oftentimes you have a selfish mentality. You got to have a kingdom mentality where you raise people and release them. And don't be afraid to watch them exercise their gifts. Don't be afraid to watch them exercise their callings in the marketplace. And I'm going to show you how this works. I'm telling you, I am here to bless your church. I am here to, whatever results you've been having now, get ready to have it 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. Because of this truth that you're hearing over the airwaves. So, principle number one, get the salt out of the salt shaker. Get the salt out of the salt shaker. Principle number two, the salt must enter the soup. That is principle number two. The salt must be strategically poured into that soup. So the example I'm using here is you're cooking a meal. In this case, you're cooking a soup. The salt must enter into the soup. You don't pour it, uh, you don't pour it discriminately. You pour it strategically. So you must pour the salt in the soup. The soup, the soup, uh, the soup is representative of the world. The soup is symbolic of the world, of the world. And it is symbolic of those seven structures. It is symbolic of the cosmos. Let me explain this in Second Kings chapter number 2. In Second Kings chapter number 2, we want to see this. In Second Kings chapter number 2, we see how there was a river in in uh, in the in in samaria there was a river and this river was cursed this river had death in it you know when people drank the water from that river the 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 the, the woman would miscarriage when they use it to 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 farm the land nothing would grow on it there was death in that river and they brought the problem to prophet elisha in second kings chapter number two in verses 19 second kings chapter number 2 verses 19 they 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 told elisha uh that this river was causing barrenness unproductivity death and it says in verses 19 and the man of that city said unto elisha behold i pray thee the situation of this city is pleasant as my lord see it but the water is nothing is not and the ground is barren and he said bring me a new cruise and put salt therein and they brought it to him, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters. The spring of the waters is the source of the waters, the source of the problem. And cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more debt or barren land. So Elisha poured the salt at the very spring, at the very source of the waters. And the waters were healed. It's, it's, it's what we're learning here is the principle from this lesson. What are the principles from this lesson? You are the salt of the earth. Principle number one, get the salt out of the salt shaker. Principle number two, get the salt in to the waters of this world, into the soup of this world. You've got to get the salt in there. You've got to get the salt in there. You've got to get the salt in there. And that means that you have to strategically place people to enter into those seven structures on which every nation, every society is built and established. That's how you do it. The people must strategically enter there. You can't change government by standing aloof and praying from a distance and asking God to change the situation in the nation. It's not the way God works. You've got to get people into that structure. You want government to change, then God must have his people in that world, in that sphere. You want the education system to change, then you must have God's people in there to change it. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate. Everybody's building their own schools left, right, and center. And yet the schools, the schools that ought to be transformed are not being transformed. You're standing aloof. You're standing aloof. You know, when you read the parable of the tithes and the wheat, when they ask them, should we pull up the wheat with, the, should we pull the, the, the weeds up? Jesus said, no, don't pull it up. Leave it there. Because if you pull up the wheat, you're, you're going to have to pull up the tires. Jesus wasn't afraid to allow the wheat to grow among the tires. Because he knew that the wheat will have the power to influence the tires and not the other way around. See, so it's the same thing. We are in this world. We ought to influence the systems of this world. You're going to change your nation. Then you must raise people to penetrate these structures. You must raise people to enter into government, education, mass media, all these seven structures if you want it change. So today we're talking about the seven principles on how to transform your nation. And Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. So I talked about two principles. Principle number one, you must get the salt out of the salt shaker. The true power of salt, you want to experience the transformational power of salt, you've got to pour it out. And number two, you've got to pour that salt into the soup. You have to strategically, like the story we talked about here, you have to pour that soup, salt, sorry, into the waters of this world so you can bring healing into the waters of this world. I hope this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I hope you're being transformed. I hope there's a paradigm shift taking place in your life as you're listening to this broadcast. I'd like you to help me get a hold of your friends and family or whoever you know that wants to be transformed by this message. You've been impacted by it. Help us get the word out. I just want to go ahead right now and pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for all of my viewers, for those who are listening right now. I thank you for the grace, the anointing, the wisdom that is resting on them. I thank you that you've called them the light of this world, the salt of the earth. That peculiar salt from the earth. And you've called them to make a difference. You've called them to address the societal diseases, the political diseases, the economic diseases, all manner of sickness and diseases among the people. You have raised them up as solutionists, creators, producers, problem solvers. In Jesus' mighty name. You don't want to miss this broadcast. The information is right there on your screen. Let us know how we can help you. We love you. And until next time, keep watching as God raises you up as a Savior to change your world. Amen.